Why not renovate the entire interior of our Isuzu Trooper? Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chadwick with you again for another installment of Project Pooper Trooper. That is our 1988 Isuzu Trooper that you see over my shoulder. The interior of this truck, well, let's be honest, it looks like a $2,000 truck interior. There's nothing to talk about, it's pretty rough. Let's get right into it guys, because it's gonna be a long one. We have a lot to do to get that looking like a modern civilized vehicle, at least more civilized. So, let's get in the garage and get a little dirty. The Trooper's interior lights have always befuddled me. No matter what I've done, bulbs, all that kind of stuff, I never could get connectivity, any wire readings, any 12 volt readings, until I cleaned all the connections. More importantly, these ones on the back of the circuit board there. Cleaning up those solders with a wire brush. And now watch this. But it does work on the door open position. So you can see it's illuminated. If I push the little rear door button, off it goes. So now our trooper has at least the rear one. Time to move up and do this one in the cabin. Here we are inside the cabin of the trooper. Let's see if we fix this front dome light too. Door closed. Oh yeah. Door open. Door closed. Door open. Loving it. Yeah, really coming together in here. So you can see I've removed the gauge cluster. Obviously the fuel and temp lights were out. I replaced them with regular bulbs and you get this really cool incandescent look, orange. And as you can see, the oil one is still the original green light bulb. But I think they actually look cool like that. Super easy, two torque screws right there. And then you simply detach the unit from the back. It's on a little black plastic piece and you pull the bulb right out. Here's what the bulb in that gauge cluster looks like when it slid into the plastic retaining piece. That's clipped in, you turn it and it locks in and then you have electricity going to it. Since we went with the orange lights in the center cluster, we're gonna do it with the gauge pod here. But you can see you have to remove the cowl first. Once you get that out of the way, you can access the backside. These bulbs are plugged in, so just be aware of that. And we're gonna replace the old ones that are really, really dim uh, with new bulbs. And we're not gonna put the green covers back on. We're just gonna leave them orange to keep the theme going in here and have the gauges be a lot more readable at night. With a little mood lighting here in the garage, we're gonna check out our new light bulbs. So remember that two of these three were totally burnt out. These ones were just kind of a, a dim kind of green light. So let's see what happens when I turn the lights on now. Oh yeah, that is nice. And it matches the period correctness too. Look at that. Our orange gauges are looking awesome in here. A lot brighter than before. I didn't go LEDs, even though you can obviously do that, but man, they look good. This just looks natural, looks good with the vehicle. Inside the Trooper, you'll notice that the little pole headlight switch there is missing the end. So what I went ahead and did, or I hope I went ahead and did to fix this, is to buy a headlight switch with a actual electrical switch on there. This is actually for a golf cart. So all I'm hoping to do is harvest this little switch part off Probably gonna unscrew it if it comes off pretty easily. And then try to drill it up so it matches this as much as possible. So it's a tight, tight fit to keep that on there. And hopefully that'll hold hard enough so when I pull this out, headlights will come on without having to pinch that narrow metal screw. So let's see if this will work. I'm actually super pumped how this turned out, guys. It looks pretty damn OEM in here. I didn't have to use any adhesive. I used a 532nd drill bit and it seemed to be the perfect tight fit. I screwed it on since there are threads on the actual headlight switch on the vehicle. So it got a real tight fitting and now I discovered something I didn't even know. I never knew this even had a dimmer control for the switch. It's actually built into this going this way actually dims and going counterclockwise all the way out will make your interior lights as bright as possible. So check this out now, boom. Our interior lights are on. You can see, maybe not the best with my garage lights on, but you can see if I go to the right, they dim. And if you come all the way back, they get brighter. I didn't even know I had that functionality. And now with the switch, I can do that. But man, headlights all the way on. It works perfectly. It's not loose. 
And it looks, more importantly, factory. Time for one of the bigger jobs I was anticipating on this truck. Getting this carpet in here because as you can see there's nothing, nothing there now in the front or the back. It's gonna be interesting. Gonna have to cut around the obviously the shifter uh, and the four-wheel drive, high-low selector, HVAC stuff down there. So before we put the new carpet in, we have to pull off the last remnants of the old carpet. So we're gonna start here in the trunk. Obviously gotta unbolt the rear seat and move that out. But first let's take out this little bar here using regular Phillips screws. 16 millimeter socket. Pull up the back seat bolts here. Nice and easy. Once you remove those bolts that actually anchor the seat belts for the rear seat, you can actually move them out of the way. We'll have to make sure we cut holes in the new carpet in the back so that we can accommodate for that again. For these brackets holding on the back seat, it's 12 millimeter. Got a long extension going up to my impact here. Easiest way to get them out. But yeah, two of them, 12 millimeter each side, and then we should be able to pop the back seat right out the back. Old carpet out. We're gonna start with the new carpet in the back and then work our way forward. Not bad. Now it looks like the back seat carpet area, basically the foot area for the back seat folks, goes under the front seats, which is interesting because they have these risers that are on, these fixed platforms that don't come up. So I'm gonna remove the seats. There's four bolts obviously that hold those to that riser and then pull out this center console, which should just unbolt pretty easily, get all that up. And then I gotta figure out how to cut that carpet so I can drop it in, probably just gonna cut that square out and drop it down, because you definitely want carpet right there on that seam. So it's gonna be pretty interesting. Let me, uh... Four 12 millimeter bolts are all that hold our Suzu Trooper driver's seat on. We're gonna go and do the passenger seat next. We'll just pick it up, move it aside, like I said, that structure it sits on is gonna stay there, so we'll have to get creative with cutting the carpet. Pretty simple stuff for removing the center console, just Phillips head screws. Inside is where your ECU lives, if you were curious about that. So pretty cool little spot there. Yeah, just four of those Phillips screws, and we'll pop this whole center console out. And here's what we're looking at with the center console and seats removed from the front. Next thing we gotta do is take these seat belt buckles out. They're gonna be in the way when we put the carpet down, so 16 millimeter bolts. Let's go ahead and pull those out and remove both of those. Here's a rough kind of mock-up of where that middle section is going to go. As you can see, it's going to cover most of the center console area, most of the seat bracket area. Uh, the seat first part is pretty long, so I think they're going to connect right there. It's going to be kind of a hidden seam. We'll do a good job of trying to hide that. But to get this middle carpet in, obviously we're going to use those same little pegs, maybe some fasteners to attach it there. But we get to pull up this center thing, which is using flathead screws, which is kind of interesting. Tuck the carpet under there and do that on both sides of the vehicle and then we can secure this middle section. Remember also, we're gonna cut out these boxes. Now, where the seats were mounted, I'm not planning on putting carpet on the inside. That's where the jack actually goes. If you have the jack and I'll probably source one eventually, but let's just cut that out and do an outside perimeter of carpet. I think that's how we're gonna do it. We'll get a measure well, because if we mess that up, it's gonna look trashy around it. So let's get everything in place first and then mock that up, cut it out. Now this is some of the custom stuff you have to do. Get yourself a nice razor blade, uh, cutting out around the base of the seat here. Uh, leave a little extra material and then work your way in. You can always cut more. You don't want to cut too much at first and be left with an open spot where you don't have carpet coverage. Now as you're working your way through the middle portion here of your carpet installation, don't forget the holes for these awesome seat belt buckles. Those are important. And man, if you tighten all this down, put your center console area back together, it's gonna be a pain in the butt lifting up the carpet to see where you need to put that, so. I fit in there pretty good. Look how good the gray match is. I'm really into it. Obviously, we're gonna need the front portion near the pedals to come down here. But yeah, we're just kinda of cutting, sizing, cutting a little more. You gotta cut out around the ECU. That whole center console is gonna cover that. But you gotta have the spots where the bolts go and your seat belts. Now, I'll probably tuck this extra instead of cutting underneath the rear and try to find a way to attach it firmly there. But it's coming together pretty good. We've got our middle section in, as you can see. Looks pretty solid right there. Much better than nothing. Cut out around the boxes pretty well. 
Obviously the center console is gonna go up over the ECU there. But here comes the hardest part, guys. Oh boy. Around these guys. So we gotta make this cut perfect or we're gonna have issues. And we gotta make sure we go all the way up in the footwells there. To make it a little easier on ourselves, I've removed the shift boots and shifter knob for both the transmission and the four wheel drive gearbox. That'll help us have a much smaller hole to cut in that carpet fitting it on. As I'm finishing up the interior here, let's take this radio holder out of the equation. We're not gonna put a stereo in this fine truck. Uh, you can see it's pretty dinged up, so it should just be some Phillips head screws to drop her down, and we'll get her out of the way because she's just kind of getting beat up by the shifter. All right, that actually clears things up a little bit. See the HVAC unit back there, that's looking pretty good. But uh, yeah, no more, uh, no more shifter smashing into that little radio holder. Cleaned it up a little bit in here. Very nice. How are we gonna take these speakers out too because they look kind of weird? We'll see. We'll wrap our sports tape. I don't know why this was done, bolstered hand grip. Uh, took the screws out, it's loose now. I'm gonna figure out why they can't put screws back in it. We might have to use different fasteners, but it is extremely sticky after that sports tape is removed. So I'm gonna remove the rest of that tape and clean it up with some Goo Gone and try to get it back stuck on the door. That'd be a nice little feature, wouldn't it? Now that's looking a lot better. A little bit of cracking up top there you can see, but it's actually held on there in place now so I can shut the door pretty easily. And it's not wrapped in medical tape, so I think these things are pretty hard to come by too. So nice little repair there, keeping it original looking. I like it. Well that job wasn't as straightforward as I thought it'd be. We've got the carpeting into the Asusu Trooper now, all three sections installed. You can see got carpet around the shifter and the four-wheel drive gearbox. Middle section looking pretty good here, and rear section fully carpeted. So, really nice. The color matches pretty amazingly with the interior, as you can see with the center console area. But yeah, this was a job to do, guys. It was so hard to get this to fit, and uh, obviously you see some little bit of rough edges around the pylon there, but that the seat rests on, but once I get the seat installed, you're not even gonna see that, so. I think it looks pretty awesome overall, but this is a pretty tough job. It took a lot of man hours to kind of get everything in there because none of these surfaces are flat at all. Everything's got contour and shape to it, but man, doesn't that look a lot better than just seeing that old uh, padding and everything else? Super happy how this came out and, well, the Trooper's got a carpeted interior, guys. It's a luxury vehicle now. Time to swap out this steering wheel with the broken rim here. Not too cool. Super sharp under there, by the way. Uh, to get the steering wheel apart, you have to take off the horn cover. Now this looks like you can just pry it off like many horn covers of the period, but that is not true. There is a single Phillips screw if you come around the back side of the horn here. Boop, right here under this uh, third spoke or bottom spoke going straight up and you'll see it right there. That's the only one and you should be able to pry this up and off. And I'll show you what you're looking at underneath that horn cover. With that screw loosened up, you can see the horn cover absolutely just pops right up. Pull it off. Of course, you're going to have some wired connections under there. I should be doing this with more than one hand. Or you won't. It just has the uh, slip over connector right there where it goes onto the spade connector right here to get your horn working. Simple as that. That's how you remove that. We're going to clean this up a little bit before we put it back in. It's a 19 millimeter nut holding the steering wheel on. Should be able to just break it loose with an impact. There we go. What I actually like to do is to not fully remove that nut, so, because we're gonna get pretty violent with it here in a second, so. Just kinda screw it back on a little bit there, so the wheel has some play in it still. We're gonna bang it, give it some palm strikes. You can use a puller. I've never really used a puller, I think maybe once before on a really stubborn wheel, but usually you just start pounding on these things, yanking on it, it all, you know. This is where you use your whole strength, guys, and just kinda keep doing that until it comes off. That nut there is to save your beautiful face from that steering wheel does let go. But let me bash on it a little bit and get it loose. And when you give the steering wheel enough of the beans, you'll see it becomes loose. Take off your hand tight nut here. Do not lose that. And then just kind of pull the old wheel off. Here's our old wheel. Here's our new one. I'm gonna, again, gonna clean the new one up before I install it. Steering wheels get pretty funky, especially 30 year old ones, but you can see here, uh, we're in pretty good shape. Obviously this one's got a lot of texture still on it, probably a little more cared for, maybe a lower mileage vehicle. This one's pretty worn out, a little cracking up there, but the big thing is, I don't know what the hell caused that, but someone cut this wheel. Time to install our new used steering wheel. 
And I'll tell you what, I never get this right on the first time. It's gonna be a couple times. So go ahead and install it. You then take the vehicle for a short drive. You gotta go long enough so, or the steering wheel straightens out and then you can reset it. So it's kind of like hit or miss. You'll never be perfect the first time, or maybe you will be, congratulations. But let's put the new wheel on there and hopefully we're pretty close. I take our steering wheel nut, just put that back on. We'll tighten that down by hand. No need to, no need to bring impacts into this equation. So tighten it by hand and then we'll use some hand tools to get it torqued down. All right, use a ratchet, just get that snug all the way down. And then we can put our horn cover back on. First thing you're gonna do is wanna connect that little electrical spade connector so you can have horn functionality. You then have a little, there's like little tabs here that clip over the metal plate. And once you get those tabs on there, so you'll know because the horn will pull off. We can go ahead and tighten that little screw in the back and we're done. Check out the new steering wheel, guys. Well, the used one. In such better condition, not fraying apart, not cut down here. Yeah, it looks good. So we have a pretty gnarly tear here on the driver seat bolster. I think I'm gonna try to stitch it, just some strong interior upholstery thread, some hand needles, and it's gonna be wonderful for the old uh, arthritis hands. But you know what? Let's get into it, guys. I think I can stitch this up. It won't look perfect, but at least it'll close that gap and hide that foam, and we'll allow that seat to last a little longer. You keep this open, it's just gonna keep tearing as you get in and out of the vehicle. So let's try to hand stitch this and see if we can make it functional and look a little better. Perfect? No, but much better. No foam showing. I'm pretty happy with how that came out. It's a function of a form, right? So that's gonna hold up a lot better. Again, I can just always restitch it if it starts to come apart, but at least the foam won't be chunking out anymore. And Overall, it gives the interior a slightly better look and will hopefully allow these OEM seats to last a little longer. Here we have the Trooper's passenger seat, and as you can see, this region here is tearing apart. It's kind of interesting because it's the inside bolster of the passenger seat. So you think that one would be worn out, but it's not at all. But yeah, this is just coming apart. This is due to the leather aging and it will continue to tear along the threads there. So we should address it, take care of it now, reinforce it. I'm quite a bit happier how the passenger seat came out. If you can remember that inside bolster is what was torn. So looking much better. That's gonna to hold together quite nicely and it just, you know, gonna improve the overall look of the interior. So here's the top of the back bench seat. You can see it's completely shredded apart through here. Now, I think I can actually fix this without sewing because we really can't sew because it ripped right here, right on this metal edge and there's nothing to sew to. It does have a metal, kind of like a crimped metal section that holds the fabric or probably held like a seam line or a little plastic piece that was attached to the fabric kind of locked it in there and pulled it tight. We're gonna have to, boy, I hope there's enough slack, pull this fabric and tuck it in that seam line, but let me pry it open and see if that's what we need to do. So I've cut away some of the just deteriorated fabric, pulled this rubber band out here. And this is kind of like a seam band that gets tucked behind that metal piece, which I bent back a little bit. So my plan is to really stretch this old fabric, which is inherently risky, I understand. Try to get it around here, tuck it back here, and pinch it down with some pliers. So that's the plan. Hopefully this will work, because this is, what, almost 65% of the way across the whole top seam here. So that should uh, sure that up. We'll probably have to use a little patch on this corner here. So I was able to stuff that fabric in there and bend that metal retaining kind of clip. It held it up pretty good. It looks pretty atrocious from this angle, but when you actually open the seat up, that looks so much better. You gotta remember before, that was just an open seam up top there. So. It's time to clean the Isuzu Troopers interior. And here's my go-to combo here. Some kind of spot or stain remover. It can be Resolve, OxyClean, whatever you want to give it a pre-soak on the fabrics before you hit it with your Bissell Spot Clean Pro. This thing. All right, no more weird discoloration or stains on the driver's seat. Time to do the passenger seat and that rear bench. And here's what our upholstery water looks like. What do you guys think of that? Pretty gnarly stuff. That is, wow. That's probably the darkest uh, water I pulled out of the interior of a car. All right, let's get these fresh seats back in the truck. 
We've got the interior of the Isuzu Trooper back together, and I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with this. First off, we have carpet. We've repaired some of the seat damage. That's looking a lot better. Cleaned up the seats. Those are smelling and looking a lot better. See our rear bench is in there. We got carpet under it. Pretty fantastic stuff. Cleaned up the dash uh, just a little bit here. Looking pretty good. We got our wheel, used new wheel installed without a big cut in the wheel there. All our lights light up. And we have a light switch. Look at that. You can see all our beautiful orange lights on our gauges. Everything's illuminated. Absolutely love that. What else have we done in here? I think that's pretty much it, but it is looking pretty dang good, guys. I'm pretty happy how this all came out. See here in the back, our new carpet. Obviously the wheel well carpets are old. I might actually take those off just to have that exposed kind of metal to match what's up here. Might look kind of neat, but for now, keeping them in. You can see the seat belt buckles back installed on the floor. Look at this, guys. This interior is starting to look pretty dang good. I'm happy how it came out. And I'll see you guys on the next project for Project Pooper Trooper.